introducing uh, Queen Colleen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jeff Bernardo, man of God. Amen. You know what? You can't, um, the Bible says, Bible says in Hebrews, the uh, 13th chapter, and about the fourth or fifth verse, uh, it said, be careful to entertain strangers because you may be entertaining an angel unaware. Okay, so thank you for the Jeff Vernadol show, amen. And guess what? The Bible says when you perish, you're going to be as angels. So you might as well just address them as the angel of this house. I, I salute you, uh, uh, Minister of uh, uh, Minister uh, Bernardo. <laughs> hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus, everybody. Hallelujah! 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 This is Evangelist Queen Colleen. We're back on the air again, Amen. And um, I wanted to encourage somebody today. I said, "Daddy," in so many words. Where can we go today? What can we do today? You got a word for your babies? You know, let's encourage them today, Amen. We want he want his babies to be encouraging because he knows a lot of stuff going out here. It's a lot of stuff going on in the world. You could look at the news every day and see that somebody getting shot, killed, stabbed, raped, robbed. Let's um, wow. Let me get my uh, this is <laughs> this is my throat rag because uh, um the napkins I have they kind of get kind of like worn out when you in Texas and you sweat. You need something to really like wipe that sweat. Amen. So let me get my. Nakim and stuff like this. Praise God. Today is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in him. Amen. Why should I rejoice? You know, some people get up with that mentality. Why should I rejoice? Why not? If you got up, amen, somebody would love to take your place. Somebody would love to use your legs, your arms, your limbs, your back, your butt, your belly, even be to turn their neck, amen. Some people can't turn their neck. Some people got a crap in their neck. Some people got arthritis. They got things wrong with them. They wish they could change bodies with you and have the things you have that you don't even appreciate, amen. Appreciate the things you have, little or big, amen, because God can add to that anytime he get ready, amen, and he don't need you to do it, amen. You ain't got to pray for it. The Bible says Ephesians is it uh, three and 20. He can do exceedingly abundantly above all you can think or ask. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you thanks and praise. I thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you for getting us up this morning. I thank you for raising us up, filling us up, and, and covering us with your blood, laying us down all night long. Hallelujah. I thank you for keeping the devils and demons away from us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you for covering our kids with your blood. Hallelujah. I thank you for going before us. Hallelujah. Everywhere we go, whatever we do. Hallelujah. We got 24, 365 days out of week protection straight from above. And you think I'm a switch God? Not in this lifetime. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, anyway, Father, we call on you to demonstrate your will and your word to your babies because can't nobody demonstrate your word better than you. Amen. And this subject today is a whole lot of different subject, but the main subject coming out the closet. Hey, it's time to come out the closet. Amen. The heat in Texas alone will bring you out the closet, make you take off your hair piece, your wig and your weave. <laughs> okay. Amen. And this is not a joke. I know I say things in jokey way, but that's just the personality I have because my mother had a really jokey spirit and a lovely and bubbly spirit. My brother rolled over on him. And guess what? I got some of her too. Amen. But I want to say today, Jesus love you and die for your sins. Amen. And we're going to do an altar call. You know, I, I, I'm not a protocol person. I go with the flow of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm subject to do anything at any time. Amen. Why? Because I'm led and directed by the Holy Ghost. But I'm going to say this Romans, the 10th chapter and the 9th verse says, I want to read it to you. Hallelujah. My Bible and my glasses. Okay, I had to get my Bible and my glasses. Amen. Yes, I pray for my eyes and I wait for the a full manifestation of my prayer. But until then, I got sense enough. I got common sense enough and Holy Ghost sense. I'm spiritually led and directed by the Holy Ghost and wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is my brother and sister closer than myself and to me. Did that, did, that make, <laughs> did that make sense? <laughs> I like that. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Take control of my tongue, my memory, because it's also everything inside of me. Take control of my, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. And when he give me a word, I come in here, blah, 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 bubbling over, amen. And I tell him, keep it bubbling over. Keep me hot and boiling and bubbling over for you in the name of Jesus, hell yeah, because I need it, amen, because I run into too many dead, what they call themselves, saints and Christians. Where they at, amen? Today, the subject is about coming out the closet, amen. You real going to be real, amen? Because these days and times, if you look at the news and everything on the news, everybody coming out the closet like, where's us? Where are we at? Where's our group? Where's the body of believers at now? They, don't just pack the church out. Get out on the highways and byways and tell somebody about Jesus, show love, wash somebody's feet, hug somebody, kiss somebody, help somebody. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. 
reach out and touch. How long does it take to reach out and touch? Get on the phone. If you can't get out, dial a 1-800 number. Just say, Lord, I need you to take my dialing thing, Helia, and dial a number, Helia. And when the lady answers, do you need prayer, Helia? I just want to tell you, Jesus love you, Helia. I just want to let you know, Helia, if you don't have a place to fellowship, come by my place, Helia. I'll pick you up if I have to and take you home in the name of Jesus, Helia. So come by here, Lord. Come by here. Remember that song, come by, I'm alone. Come by, y'all. Come by, y'all, my Lord. Come by, y'all. He said, come by here. Guess what? He's already up in here. <laughs> Is he in you? If he's in you, the Bible says in Thessalonians, don't quench the spirit. Let go and let God. Let him have his way so we can really have a good fellowship. Amen? You don't want to come out to church dead and then leave dead, do you? Because some of y'all do. I'm going to keep it real and tell it like it is. Amen? Because I used to. But when he got a hold of me and I said, Lord, as I tarried and waited for the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, I asked the Holy Ghost to come in. Amen? Shoot. When God came in, you can't shut me up now. Amen? Back in the day, I was, you know, little nonchalant. I was shy and didn't want to talk much, didn't want to say much. You know, but, uh, hey, when the Holy Ghost come upon you, he'll bring all that mess out. He just, boom, here I am. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together wonderful to me. I never know how much it costs to see my sins. Help me, baby, up on that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my key. I'm proud of that, okay? Yeah, baby, I was looking on the uh, web today, uh, Facebook today, and the lady, um, <laughs> she had on her, her website thing, I don't know who she was, I was just scrolling around, you know, book, 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 book twinkling and around, and it said, uh, this is a Buddha. And they say, you know, if you put Buddha out there on share and like, you will get money. I said, I got something greater than Buddha. I got Jesus. I said, put him on blast. Amen. Because Buddha going to bow. Mm. And anybody that served Buddha going to bow. Amen. You going to give up the knee. Amen. <laughs> you going to bow the knee. Amen. Uh, uh, what's that boy name? Uh, Daniel. Uh, Daniel. And, uh, Daniel didn't. David and Goliath. Goliath bows his knee, baby. He, he's the one that cursed or he uh he, he spoke bad against God and he reviled God. And God turned around and said, I'm going to get you back. He In so many words, he found somebody not big his size. He found somebody the size of David, which is a really little, runny little guy that you probably wouldn't even think God could use. And he had him to get those five uh, rocks and he put one in his slingshot and said, in the name of the Lord, hallelujah, I'm about to do this, hallelujah. And he said, I like what he said, just like when you go out today, just say, I'm going out in the name of the Lord, hallelujah. I'm coming in in the name of the Lord, hallelujah. I'm going to receive my riches in the name of the Lord, hallelujah. Souls going to be saved today in the name of the Lord, hallelujah. Whatever you do, say in the name of the Lord, hallelujah. Because if it worked for David, hallelujah, the little shepherd boy, hallelujah, the God anointed and appointed, hallelujah, and raised him up to be a king, hallelujah, and a great warrior. And then he's a great lover of God, hallelujah. He used to dance and praise God, hallelujah. And I believe I got that dance. I tell David sometime, I know you hear me in a supernatural. I think I got you beat because I dance for him too. It ain't got to be no music. It just makes you want to dance. Makes you want to shout. Makes you want to throw up your hands and say hallelujah. <laughs> so God slew Goliath. And guess what he did when he fell down? He bowed. Guess what? Every knee shall bow. Philippians. Okay. I got my Bible. It's open in here and it's coming out of my mouth. Amen. You might not see me pick up this little black book. Amen. But it's Philippians 2 and 10 says, at the name of Jesus. Mm, hey, people say, why well, he got to be there. Could you do what he did? Could you come in a perfect body? We came in as sinners and sinful. He didn't come in no corrupt body. He came in holy. He left out holy. He said there was no guile found in his mouth. He didn't cuss, lie, cheat, steal, and do none of that mess. And yet he says, Hebrews the 16th, uh, fourth chapter, 16, 70 verse, said he was tempted in all areas. Guess what? Just like you. So can it be done? And he's in you and you got the holy. Yeah, it is. Can you be perfect, which means mature? Yes, you can be. I mean, anything else you want you? Why? Because you got the Father, Son, Holy Ghost in you. Thank you. 
You can be anything you want to be if, if it's something good and great. Amen. Hell, so don't let hell of you. So don't let nobody stop you and make you think, well, you can't do that. Or God only give you the, what you need. That's a lie. Uh, what's Psalms 37, 4 and 5 said, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. And then he said, if you commit your ways unto me, he said, I'll make it come to pass. Mm, hey, you ain't got to do nothing. He just keeps having the faith. I'll make it come to pass. Hallelujah. Seek ye first. Is that uh, Matthew 6 and 33? The kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Him and all his righteousness. All these things shall be added. He don't just do food. He don't. He's not just a healer and a person to give you food. He want to give you anything else. He'll give you the world. If he gave you Jesus, what else would he not give you? That's scriptural. Woo! Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Mm. Lord, I give you thanks and praise in the name of this. is coming out the closet. There's too many other people coming out the closet for the Christians to be still stuck in the closet. Amen. Ask for forgiveness of your sins and come forth. You can still be forgiven. If you're looking at this today and you're not looking at this today, you can be forgiven. Amen. The Bible says, confess your sins. Let's go to uh, first. Uh, is it first Saint? Let's go to John. Uh, first John 1 and 9. Hallelujah. 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 First John 1 and 9. This is what God's word said. This is your um, roadmap to heaven. Cool me off, Father, in the name of Jesus. I give you thanks and praise. 1 and 9 said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. The Bible says in the name of Jesus, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, have fellowship one with another. It didn't say you're going to have to love them all or like them all. Love them, but you don't, you might not like my personality, but you're going to have to love me if you call yourself a believer. And I'm going to have to love you. That don't mean I like your personality, but guess what? You up for a change like I'm up for a change. You on the uh, operating table like I am. So, hey, I'm going to leave you alone because you might be in your deepest operation change, a shifting in your life. Amen. And I might not know about it. Why? Because I got a shifting going on in my life. Amen. Shifting up higher. Going to take you higher. There's another song. What's it? Uh, what's the song? It's by John P. Key. Uh, but da, 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 help me, Holy Spirit, P. Higher, 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 higher. Talk about higher. It's going higher. It's by John P. Key back in the day. Um, anyway, sometimes Danny Father dropped it in my spirit. I can't get it right now, but it's by John P. Key uh, back in the day when he used to uh, sing. And um, hey, John, I don't know if you listen right now, if you ever get, get a hold of this video, but if you're not on stage, you still on stage. Amen. Whether you're making movies or radios or records or wherever you are, either you're in a hospital room or you're out at work, amen, still let your light shine. We don't have to just let our light shine in the studio. Amen. When I get get out of this little book book studio, I'm still on the streets, highways and byways and on the phone telling somebody about Jesus, amen, because he's somebody to talk about. You know, we talk about everything else, gossip about this. Mm. Hey! I'm moving up. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Here's the song. I'm moving up to bigger and better things. I will not let nothing hinder me. I'm moving up to bigger and better things. Speak and prophesy over your life. Amen. I am moving up to bigger and better things. I am, hallelujah, a mighty warrior of God. I am a virtuous woman, hallelujah, in a humble way and not in a cocky way, but confident. Because of who I serve and who's in me. Greater is he that's in me. Amen. I'm moving up to bigger and better things. I will not let nothing hinder me. I'm moving up to bigger and better things. Don't let nothing hinder you. Don't let nothing stop you. Amen. I got married. I told my husband back in 1989 when I got married. Amen. And I told Reverend Anthony McCarty in that living room. I stood in there. I said, baby, I love you. I said, but my joy has already been filled. Jesus is the joy of my life. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You, you are the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Jesus. You're the center of my joy. I love that because he is. I, I'm all up in him. Amen. I say if he got a nose, I'm 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 when he sniffs, I'm in there. Amen. I'm the hair on his chest. I don't even know 
<laughs> if Jesus, God, the Holy Ghost got hair on his chest, but yeah, by the time he finished fooling with me, yeah, baby, he got hair on his chest. I'm the hair on his chest. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm the necklace. If he's wearing it around his neck, I'm just that close to him. Guess what? You can be too. It ain't just for me. I'll put this on here and encourage you to let you know. If I say I'm sitting in my daddy's lap, guess what? His lap ain't just for me. His lap is for all his babies. And right where you are, in the chair, in the scooter, in the barber chair, in the nail shop, you sitting in his lap. Amen. Guess what? The number one of these messages he's going to give me, you, it's on daddy today. Why? Daddy got you up. Daddy has something else for you to do. Ask God, help me fulfill my assignment. Whatever my assignment, my task, my job, my place, my position is, amen. Position me in the right place so I can do what you want me to do. See, be, get, have, and hit the nail on the head, arrow on the target in Jesus. Hey, in Jesus' name. Cool me off, Father, in the name of Jesus, so I put this fan down. Give me some air, baby. I need it right now. Cool me off in the body. I rebuke this hormone spirit, fleshly spirit, uh, hot flash spirit, hellish breath spirit, whatever it is. I bind it up and send it out and wipe out and swipe out the existence of it. Then I'm cooled down immediately as I'm doing kingdom business. And when I'm not doing kingdom business, which is unusual, amen, because when I'm eating, I'm still talking. I be I sleep. <laughs> I, blah, 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 blah. I believe when I'm sleeping. I'm still saying, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul. Rejoice, my King, in what you hear. And let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. And it says, I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I want to have an altar call right now. I don't know if, if anybody listens to this. One person, two person, 100 billion people. But do you know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior today? If you're looking at this and you scroll by this chapter, today, we're going to have an altar call. Now, usually in the church, is a protocol. They have it in the middle of the service. Hey. God laid it in my heart on the way coming in. Have an altar call. I want you to accept Jesus Christ into your heart, your personal Savior. I don't want you to lose out. I don't want you to die and go to hell because Matthew 25 and 41 said hell and death and fire and all that. Hell and fire was made for Satan and his angels. And guess, let me just recap that. His fallen angels called demons and demonic spirits. Now, that don't mean you no good. Those bad thoughts you get is from them. The good ones is from God. Take hold to the good thoughts and the positive and throw out the negative, nasty and the bad thoughts. Amen. Because they not of God. Amen. That's a lie. Somebody tell you that's God. No, that ain't God. If it is, he's going to have to confirm it four or five times. <laughs> but anyway, I want to uh, shout out uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth mm, the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And they say, is it that? E that's easy. All you got to do is do you believe? I mean, when you look at the sky, the moon, the stars, you, and everything he did to make and create you, is it hard to believe? Is that so hard to believe that God could do that? Absolutely. That's why we call him God, the great I am, the creator of heaven and earth. Amen. The, uh, uh, spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai and gave him the Ten Commandments and said, now go down there and give your people these. Right? Because they're not acting like my people right now. <laughs> Romans 10, 9 and 10. Get the Bible. Get a, get, get a, put that computer down, that iPod, uh, PlayStation, all that mess down. Cut the TV off and give God a little time today. Amen. Romans 10, 9 and 10 said, this is about coming out the closet. We're going to do an altar call first. Amen. Somebody need to be saved. Somebody need to set being delivered. Amen. And you ain't got to come to me, but you can. I'm at 903 area code 669-2523. Evangelist Queen Colleen. If you call and say who, I'll say how many, how many, what kind of prayer you need. You just call and say what, I'll say what kind of prayer you need. I, more than likely, yeah, what can I do for you, amen? Four in the morning, two in the morning, three in the morning, one in the morning. You having uh, prayers and nightmares and you want somebody to come and lay hands on that house and, and, and walk those stinking funky spirits out of the house, you think, for, before you got in that house, some demons and something to possess that house? Yeah, because I seen a shadow in my house last night. Guess what I said? If it ain't you, the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, I ball, balled up, bag up, bind up, abolish. Swipe and wipe, pluck up from the roots, cast it out of here, never to exist, reoccur, or reemerge in my face, space, or place on this land of property ever. In Jesus' name, it is written. Then you tell, like Jesus told uh, Satan, uh, Matthew's the fourth chapter, it is written. Whatsoever I desire when I pray and believe is done, hell yeah. Mark 11, 22, and 24, it is written. 
Luke 10, 19, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing, uh, nothing, uh, nothing, uh, nothing, uh, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hallelujah. And then he says, Luke 10 and 20, spirits are subject to you. Hallelujah. That's why the devil don't want you to read the Bible. Hallelujah. He don't want you to go to church. Hallelujah. He don't want you to have nothing to do with God. Hallelujah. Because you're going to find out, you're going to find out you got more authority than him. Hallelujah. And he got to bow to the Jesus and you. Hallelujah. So that's why he tried to keep you busy with these gadgets, cell phones, iPods, computer, TV, and all these different kind of movies that ain't fit for nobody to watch with all this cussing and bullcorn mess. Amen. Try to keep you busy with all that so he can stay busy trying to steal your steal, kill, and destroy your kids, your family members, sleep with, rob, rape, dog, mistreat, fool, trick, manipulate, uh, deceive. Oh, man, and it's just a list goes on. But we bind up all the works of the enemy today and forevermore. It's written, uh, Matthew's uh, 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 we hold your finger there, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Matthews is 18 and 19. Let's go there real quick. That's why God gave you authority and power. Use it or lose it, baby. Use it. You got authority and power, use it. You ain't got to call nobody and say, I need prayer. No, you got prayer. Just a word of prayer, just small prayer. Just small prayer out your mouth and do it. Matthews 18 and 19 says this. Uh, the, let's, I'll say 18, 19. This is not the one I'm going to. I'm going to the 18. 18 and 18 is where I'm going about bind up and loose. He gave you authority and power. Once you become born again, you ain't got to be in the Lord 40 years to use this word. It's still activated from the time you say, I accept Jesus Christ to my heart as my personal Savior. I believe he is the Son of God. Coming to my heart, make a change in me. I repent of my sins and ask for forgiveness. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Now get baptized, get to it. If you was around me, I'll take you to a pool. I'll dump you in, baby. I'm ordained. Hallelujah. And certified and ordained. Amen. And this anointing alone lets you know I'm ordained. If anybody see this and talk to me and hear and be around me and th they don't know, they just won't know because it ain't, no, it's not, it's obvious. I'm anointed, warm and holly, holly favored, powerful woman of God. Hallelujah. Of the most high in the name of Jesus. And it ain't my anointed. Guess what? It's his. I don't even belong to myself. I belong to him. Why? I gave him, to, gave my life to him. If you, if he did heaven and earth and did everything he did in heaven and earth and everything you see in heaven and earth, he said heaven and earth is his. And the, uh, the uh, is that 24th? Go back to Matthews 18 and 18. It says, Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. And then uh, I think it's the 24th chapter, 24th chapter of Psalms. I mean, you got authority, baby. You look, your, this is your book. Your word, the word of God said, the earth is the Lord's 24th chapter of Psalms, the division of Psalms, division of Psalms says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein, for he had founded it. He founded it. He fixed it. Said when it was darkness. He brought light into darkness, amen? And guess what? You are that light that you can bring light into somebody's darkness today. When you go to the store, highways, byways, a hamburger stand, taco stand, a library, Walmart, Kroger's, Ralph's, and all these other stores, you are the light he's in you. Don't dim and dimish him, amen? He wants to display himself in you. You don't want to do it. Let him do it, amen? Get out the way and let go and let God. Is that St. John 33 and 30 says, I must decrease and you must increase. Heavenly Father, take control of me. I give the mic to you because these are your babies and nobody can say nothing to your babies, babies better than you because you know them better than I do in the name of Jesus, even though your babies are my babies because we won. I give you thanks and praise, but he is the founder and the owner and the maker and the creator of our souls and anything else. He created heaven and earth. So you dad gum skipping. He got a right to say whatever you want to say. And we got a right to bow and say, yes, sir. No, sir. Now, that's who I say, yes, sir, and no, sir, too. And he don't even require that. He just said, I just want you to do two things. Jesus said in the New Testament, just love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and spirit, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do you love yourself today? Have you been taught like me? Love this, love this. I didn't even know how to love myself. I said, Lord, how do I love myself? I've been taught to love my enemy, love my mother and father, love everybody. I ain't been taught to love myself. What do I do? Because going beyond the mall, it goes beyond the mall and getting your nail done is loving yourself. When you can love on him. And you ain't at the mall. You're not on the couch. You're not buying nothing, spending nothing, trying to figure out where you're going to put it when you get home. You can still love the Jesus in you. It's loving you. Start loving you. You look in the mirror and say, you look good. Even when my hair ain't combed, no lipstick, no makeup on, and nothing like that. You why? Because the greater is he that's in me. His natural beauty that he gave you is good enough. If he wanted me to have anything else. Tattoos all over my nose, back, butt, belly, breast, and all the other unseen places. He wanted me to have that. Guess what? Do you think he left something out? He would have gave me that along with my eyes, nose, back, butt, and belly. Thank you. You ain't got to add nothing to what he gave you. Thank you. You're screwing it up, really. <laughs> Look like the jigsaw puzzle somewhere walking up and down the street. But uh, hey, that's that's 
what you do and that's what you do and you between you and god you do what you do amen but i'm telling you it is in the word about about don't tattoo and put all that mess on you because you don't belong to yourself that's his body he you that body is on loan from the lord you didn't come in by yourself and you uh you you not going out by yourself amen that spirit returns back to the lord read ecclesiastics this Bible says your, your flesh and body goes back to the dust and your spirit goes to be with the Lord. And then you'll have your final resting place. Amen. So what you do now determines where you spend life later on. And I hope you're born again because that's the starting point by accepting Jesus Christ to your heart, your personal Savior. That's why we're about to have an altar call. Anyway, uh, uh, Psalms 24, the first chapter says, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. Aren't you the they that dwell therein? Amen. For he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Amen. Who, who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? Or who shall stand in a holy place? He, he's telling you, who will he that have clean hands and a pure heart? Who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor swelt, sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him. Not any generation. The generation that seek him. Amen. Hallelujah. Thy, they, that seek him, that seek thy face. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up forever. You age, be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. If you lift him up, he said, when I be lifted up, I'll draw a man. You got to do your part. He'll draw the man. Just lift him up. You, I don't, you put it on a t-shirt to say, Jesus love you back in front. Put it on your forehead. Put it on your car. Hallelujah. You scared to open your mouth. Hallelujah. Ask him to give you boldness. The Holy Spirit is in you. Just ask him, Lord, let the Holy Spirit be booted up in me. However he want to use me. Since I'm yours, I belong to you. I want that too. How would you like to have a steak and potatoes and mashed potatoes and the steak is still sitting on the table? Okay, or the stove. Hey, hey that's the main course. Bring it. The same thing with the Holy Ghost. That's the main course. You got to have it. You need 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 it. <laughs> Amen. I needed it. I asked in 1980, 83, my son was born. I said, dude, I call him my duty, my booby. I said, baby, I didn't even call him baby then. I wasn't calling him baby then. You grow in, grow a little bit more and with him, he'll start being your baby and your do. You know, or whatever you want to call him. I have pet names for my honey. Thank you. But he's still my savior. I uh, respect, honor, bow, worship, glorify, shout, jump, holler, whatever. Hey, I'm flexible. I'm not no stuck off, stuck in one place Christian. Matter of fact, I go to church Sunday and they got my chair. Okay, then I know he got me moving somewhere else because he want to sit me somewhere else. Same thing when I pull in the parking lot and somebody get the parking space. It's like, hey, thank you, because I'm right over there where he wanted me to be. If he wanted me to have that spot, he would have held it for me. So I ain't got to get out looking stupid and crazy. Nobody, hey, Jesus, love you. Somebody cross over me and we don't have an accident. I roll down my window and say, Jesus, love you. Have a great day. Be careful, baby. I'll keep going. You don't give him no finger. Give him the Holy Ghost. Give him Jesus. <laughs> give him Jesus. Anyway. You don't know, uh, but you got a lot of power and authority. And Satan tries to give us all these gadgets and all these things to distract us so he can uh, distract us and keep us at home in the computer, iPods, and all these things in the phone while he tries to steal, kill, and destroy our souls, our baby souls, and dog, mistreat, rob, rape, lie, cheat, steal, and all the mess you see on the news. Amen. So I'm saying to say this don't be off score. Don't let them get you off, off uh, ambush you and, and decoy you and, and get you off track. You're a believer, hey, stay quick, fast, and sharp. I pray and decree and declare you stay quick, fast, and sharp. Amen. Be quick, fast, sharp, alert, vigilant, you know, and be a boom, boom, boom. Hit the nail on the head, arrow on the target, be at the right place, right time, do every, everything that God wants you to do because he didn't miss and hit, and neither will I miss and hit, nor you miss and hit in Jesus' name. Amen. But you do have the power to bind up and loose. He gave you power and authority. Amen. And uh, this Matthew 18, 18, 18, say, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What does that mean? Binding up something means to bind up, wind up, and it can't get it loose. So you do the devil. For you get up in the morning when you get up in the morning, Satan. I don't know what kind of plans you got for me today, but I bind you up and I bind up those plans. Abolish, banish, and vanish. Cast them off this earth and swipe and wipe off you and anybody associated to you, linked to you, or uh, attached to you from the least to the greatest from here, your roots, that you never even exist. Wipe out the existence of you and all your plot, plan, ploy, strategies, attacks, attempts, commands, demands, or the like against me, the remnant, the future chosen, disciples, believers, kids, grandbabies, and the like forever and permanently in Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name. Hello, somebody. You got authority and to bind them up. I mean, you, um, 
I pray and I wouldn't always like this. I had to pray and God got me to this point. I pray and, and pray and, and pray and I read, study, pray, ask God, give me a prayer that you won't get nobody else. Help me take control of my tongue in the name of Jesus. Take control of me, me, period. My feelings, emotions, put them in your hands. Somebody say something to me and look stupid at me like they do. You know, it don't bother me. Anymore. I can smile and still go hug them. Why? Because he loves me just like I am. I can love them like they are. Why? Because they still in surgery right now. They still in uh, operation. They might be on the operating table right now. Leave them alone. Just love them anyway. He didn't say you have to like their personality, but love them. Amen. Love them. Not judge them. Amen. Praise God. It's not what go in your body. It's what come out your heart. That don't mean you could drink and do all the things you want to do or you should have used to do it. Amen. And if you do, do it between you and God. That's your business because you only got one judge, one lawgiver, baby. He said, I'm the beginning and the end of the law. I'm the alpha, the mega beginning and the end. I'm the one that's got to either give you the final yes or no or, or whatever. So don't worry about what man know and see about you. Amen. Worry about that when God see it. Amen. And since you can't hide it, you might as well say, Lord, we're going to have this drink together today because <laughs> you can't hide it. Hey, yeah. So I, you, whatever it is, whether it's Kool-Aid, iced tea, matter of fact, I'm going to go home and have me some good old homemade iced tea because some of the mess they put in this uh, Kool-Aid and all this other stuff could be the reason why we bloated and so big. And some of the hormones and all the stuff they put in meat, you don't know why you big and, and have headaches and things is going on with you. All the pesticides and mess they put in food and spray over the food and then they turn around and still give it to us. You better show, make sure you pray over your food. Amen. Hallelujah. But that was Matthew's 18 chapter and the 18th verse. And the 19th verse says, again, I say unto you, this is your power and authority you have. He's given you. Amen. If two touch and agree, asking the Father, anything on earth is done. He didn't say how long it'll be before it's done. He said it's done. He didn't say the day and the hour, but it's done. So just like me that get impatient sometimes, he's just saying, hold on, I got this. You already submitted to me. Hold on, I'm gonna get to, I'm gonna get to it. Colleen, because you're not the only one that's praised. I got other people too that I gotta take care of too. Amen. So uh just know God is already on it. Keep the faith and keep believing. And it shall appear and it shall come forth. Amen. Praise God. But um, the altar call is today, if you don't know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, if you haven't accepted him to your heart, you say, a lot of people I run into say, pretty. I said, God, I said, I don't want to see you go any deeper than where you are. I said, do you know Jesus as your Savior? I'm still waiting. I'm still trying to wait. I'm still trying to figure it out. Don't. Why are you trying to figure it out? He didn't already worked it out. Just accept him into your heart, your personal Savior, while you try to figure it out. Because if he come back today, and you don't know him as your personal savior? No, he's not mean because he gave you all that time to get to know him. You going to hell. Because the Bible says, let's go to John. How could you say that, Colleen? I ain't saying the word says, amen. The Bible says, if thou shalt, if thou shalt confess him as your personal savior. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Stop right there. Did you hear that? Now, on the reverse if you don't accept into your heart what you think, you do the math. He said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, believe in thy heart, that God has raised Jesus from the dead, get this, thou shalt be saved. On the flip side, let's back that up. If you don't, you ain't saved. And unsaved folks is going to hell with the heathens. Amen. So you want to change that, and you can. Because you know what? He gave everybody a fair opportunity. Now it's up to you what you do with that choice. And that chance. But I take Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Amen. Praise God. So I'm I'm here today to, to ask you if you don't know Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins. We're going to uh three, uh, because I said that right there explains it about if you don't know him as your personal savior and haven't asked him asked him to come to your heart as your personal savior, you want to do that because you want to be locked in. Amen. I didn't see Jesus either. When I got saved a long time ago and asked him to come into my heart years ago, I didn't see him. But when he opened up your eyes and he come into your heart, everything you see, it's like, wow, that's God. The clouds, you look at those pretty clouds. Man can't throw those clouds in the sky. They can't switch and switch them and pull them out. They can't do the moon. They can't put those stars to be in that pretty black twi twi twilight out there at night. And in the daytime, the flowers bud so pretty and the animals and you and everything he made about you and your nose and all things like that. And, and the earth and the dirt and the ground and, and the green grass. And I mean, hey, yeah, I believe you, God, baby. And he talked to me and walked with me. He's here today. I welcome you, sweet baby. I love you, honey, Father. Love you, Holy Spirit. Love you, Jesus. And I give my kudos. I salute you, sweet daddy, in the name of Jesus. Uh, but the Bible does say if you don't know him as your personal savior, you know, you won't, you won't, you won't get another chance. There's no fire, fire escape in hell. Amen. 
Come out the closet, Christians. You got the same authority and same Bible I got. You've been going for years to church. Get up out that seat, your big butt off those seats. I don't care what color you are. Get out there in the streets, highways, byways, and take your behind out there to the rest home. Because some of y'all got kin folks in the rest home you need to go visit. Amen. Go to the rest home. Take your karaoke out to the park. Amen. Take it out on the streets and highways like I do sometime. Amen. Come out the church. Tell the church, I'm going to meet you over there on such and such a boulevard. And uh, grab, a grab a chair before you leave. We got them in the, in the overflow hall. And I'll meet you there. We're going to have fellowship outside. To, we, we've been in the temple so long. We are the temple. We don't, forgot which temple, which, which temple is what. The Bible says in Colossians, you are the temple that he dwells in. Uh, that's Colossians. We are the uh, body. We are the body. Amen. And is the Corinthians says that we are first Corinthians six, six. It was hey, hold on. It's on first Corinthians six and 14. Be you not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness. Hello, somebody. Some of your friends and family members ain't righteous. They don't talk righteous. They ain't living righteous. They don't want to go to search, search, church with your God and who you serve, what you still hanging around for. I don't care. You got a new family. Amen. What did Jesus say to them? He said, your mama's outside. Mark the third chapter at the end, last two verses of Mark the third chapter, last two verses. He said, your mom and your brother's outside. He said, hold on a minute, baby. My mother and brother, are those who do the will of the father. That's your new family. You came in with one family, but you inherited another family. That's your new family. Amen. Praise God. Get that. Catch that. Mm, jump that. Jump and get that. Okay. But he says right here, second Corinthians six. Amen. He says, 6 and 16, and what agreement hath the temple of God, temple of God, the temple of God, you are the temple of God, you are where he dwells, the temple of God, for you are the temple of the living God, you are the temple, you are the temple, so what he's saying, get out the church, get out the building sometime, amen, go out, did you see Jesus sitting up in some pews on Sunday, did you see him teaching the disciples, okay, we're going to church on Sunday, then we're going to 8 o'clock service, then we're going to 3.30, I mean, they get tired out. They was out on the highways and byways trying to get somebody to get saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost and get the word, get got to them. You done got so pregnant with the word, you don't even know which way go, go, go lay that baby somewhere. How, what does that mean? Evangelist Queen Colleen, minister, prophet Queen Colleen, amen. Go and tell somebody about Jesus, start dumping up, you done, you done humped up and, and pumped up and got pumped up a lot of word. Now go put it out, put it out, give it to somebody, amen. Praise God. You're going out there. Just, the earth church is not. Yeah, I used to dress fancy and still got a bunch of fancy clothes. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the fancy clothes. But the fancy clothes ain't going to get me to heaven. Amen. You bet you're behind. I'll take that hat off and that fur off and those clothes and those shoes. People have seen me done before. I'd get my take my shoes off and had to hold in my stocking, got a hole in my stocking and still run, shout and jump. Amen. I ain't going to let those dutied up, prettied up, man-made clothes. Amen. Because you already clothed in righteousness. You're clothed in humility and humbleness and peace and love and joy. You got clothes on already, but yet for for the earth's sake, you still got to put your earthly clothes on because you don't you can't go out butt naked. You know somebody might follow you home, maybe. <laughs> okay, uh, but anyway, um, you uh you got your spiritual garments on. You know, so don't let your earthly clothes and all the hats and clothes and the Mercedes you drive up in and nice cars you drive in, you know, get you so dignified and holy that you can't even walk in and say hi to nobody no more. You know, you looking at people like, hey, I'm here. Hey, get up, go behind up and praise them too. Why? Because you still got to, you still got to work to do it and you on, you still on assignment, even in the body, even in the body, even at church, you're on assignment. I mean, you can make or break somebody just with your looks and your nasty personality. Make sure you have the right personality. I mean, I had to come out and encourage somebody today. Because the devil was attacking me. So this is how I reattack him back. Amen. And I go out on the highways and byways and still telling people I love them and how beautiful they look and how God loves them. Oh, that pisses Satan off. Good. Because that's just what I came to do. He came to kill, steal, and destroy. John 10, 10. Guess what? I got up to kill, steal, and destroy all his plans. Override, overthrow, cancel board, terminate, pluck up, ball up, bag up, bind up, forever, permanently swipe and wipe him off the face of this earth and all his dirty deeds. In Jesus' name, and release and loosen all the things he tried to stop, block, and hinder us from getting is coming forth in the natural. Believe that today. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Father, back me up because your word says in Mark 16 and 20, signs will follow them. I'll confirm my word. I'll, I'll confirm my word with signs following. And Mark 16 and 17 says, signs will follow them that believe. So guess what? If you're a believer, you ain't got to run, shout, and jump like me. But when you get excited about somebody that died for you, and did everything they did for you, it make you want to run, shout, and jump. Amen. It make you want to say, hey, woo. 
Hey, I didn't used to holler like this, but God gave it to me and I, I love it. He, I told him, do something different with me. I don't want to be like normal people. First, first is that first Peter two and nine says we are royal priesthood. First of all, do you know you are the royal family? Amen. Start acting like you from the royal family. You from a royal hot line, baby. Hot off the press. Hey. I'm from the royal family. I ain't, I could be dressed in some khaki pants, some saggy baggy khaki pants, hair wrapped up like this, and still from the royal family. Don't have to have no jewels and diamonds on, and still from the royal family. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. So, hey, know who you are and whose you are. But um, uh, the Bible says, First Peter two and nine, we are royal priesthood, holy nation. The, about four they roll it royal peculiar, per, per, peculiar particular people. Royal priesthood, <laughs> holy nation. We ain't supposed to be like everybody else. You ain't supposed to be like me. Bring your own flavor. You got your own Kool-Aid, you bring your own Kool-Aid, amen. Is it time? Hallelujah. Bring your own flavor, amen. Just mix it in in one big pot like gumbo, amen, or like, uh, is it gumbo or whatever you want to put in that pot, amen. But uh, I want to say that if you don't know Jesus Christ in your heart, and to your heart, and if you don't know Jesus Christ, I don't care what you're doing, you're still smoking a joint, keep that joint. You drinking a beer? Drink that beer. Amen. Why? Because he can come to you in the midst of that beer, baby. He can come to you while you're drinking or smoking, or even laying in the bed with somebody you ain't got no business. Amen. Just say, Lord, I repent of my sins. Repeat that to me. Father, I repent of my sins. I ask for forgiveness of all my sins and transgressions. I do believe you are the Son of God and I need you now to come into my heart as my personal Savior. Change my things in me. Make me of the royal family. Help me to be a part of kingdom business. No longer do I want to be a part of what I do, but it's not I that live. It's Christ that live in me. I hope somebody was healed, set free, and delivered by this. I hope somebody got the word. Hallelujah. I hope somebody was encouraged like I was today. You encouraged me by me encouraging you. Amen. I thank you for, for letting me come on, Richard Bernardo. Hallelujah. I give you thanks and praise, honey, Father, and kudos to you. I bow to you, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Thank you for Richard Bernardo and all the things you have set up for him to bless him in Jesus' name for being a blessing to me. It's not about me. It's about him. Amen. Remember, it ain't me that you see. It's God speaking through me. It ain't my anointing. It ain't my voice. Ain't nothing on me belong to me. It all belongs to the Lord. I love you guys. Have a great day. And Jesus love you in the name of Jesus.